Riverside will actually transmit the video and audio for you to have a live conversation with your guest. The special sauce is that they are recording the video and audio right in the browser and what is being sent for the live call is a downrated version of that. I'm noticing a trend. More of my clients are asking me, how do you get high quality video on a remote call for, for example, podcasting, but also social media content creation, and especially those video clips that you then can share. Now in this video, I wanna share with you the one service that I have been using for years and also constantly recommend to my clients and friends as the solution to create high quality, remotely recorded video with guests and interview partners and so on right in your browser or on your tablet or smartphone. Now, why would you even care for such a thing? I think it's becoming increasingly clear that being able to share reels and shorts and similar content pieces is increasingly important. And if you're doing a podcast with interview guests, just doing audio, sure, it reaches a certain type of audience, but you're missing out on so much potential on the video side. Now, the problem in many cases is that the really interesting interview partners might not be able to travel to your location because in a remote work world, you might actually be in completely different parts of the world. Now, even though you might already be used to using one of those conferencing tools, that is not what I would use for remote video recording. And the main reason comes down to resolution and internet quality. The resolution is a big topic, for example, for places like Zoom as well as Google Hangouts. Those platforms limit your resolution that you can get through the pipeline so that you are also going to be limited with the recording quality. If you, for example, have a regular Zoom call without the Pro plan, you're pretty much limited to 360p, which is the lowest tier quality that you can have on YouTube. And then if you upgrade to the Pro plan and follow a couple of interesting steps, then you actually also can only get up to 720p, with 1080p only being reserved to higher business plans or the enterprise world. Now, Google Hangouts is in a similar boat. If you wanna get high quality recordings, you have to have the Google for Workspace account. But even if you get the high resolutions for these accounts, you're still going to be bound to the problems that might arise by having a bad internet connection. And all of that video has to be transferred right then and there for the recording to be in high quality. Now those services, because they're made for live video calls and the real time feeling of that, they're going to instantly lower that resolution or bit rate, even if there's just the slightest hiccup in the internet connection speed. And that's why I always use a service called Riverside.fm to do high quality offsite remote interview type recordings and they also have a bunch more features in there that I might talk about in other videos. Today, however, I wanna focus on how you can get the top quality recording with Riverside while being remotely connected with your guest or interview partner and what type of qualities you can reach there and why that actually gives you that increase in quality that you can't get from those remote conferencing tools. Here we are on the website of Riverside and you can see they have a bunch of features. One of the main ones being that video interview recording as well as podcasting capabilities. But as I've just mentioned, they also have a bunch of other features in the world of clip creation. You can edit and transcribe your podcast and much more. They're also used by tons of different shows. As you can see here, Tim Ferriss is using this platform. Mark Zuckerberg and Kerry V were using it for a interview and many, many more. I've been using Riverside for a couple of years now, specifically for this recording capability. But today I wanna just give you an inside look at what the studio has to offer and a bit of a technical insight why that matters. The first thing that you have to do is to either plan a recording or just straight up jump into the studio. The ability to plan a recording actually comes with the benefit that you can schedule a recording in advance and then you can already send that link to your guest and you will also have this in your setup here in the studio. And now you can see there's a call that is scheduled for a specific time. You can add it to your calendar 
or send it to that person. But as an alternative, you also always have the option to straight ahead go and jump into the studio and once you're there, you're asked for your name, you're asked whether or not you're using headphones, which will disable or enable the echo cancellation, and then you can already join the studio. And if you're doing this for the first time or your guest is joining your call and then the interface will actually look very similar, they will also be asked to request camera permissions for the microphone and the camera to work. Of course, you wanna give that allowance so that you see the preview right here on the right hand side. And then you can see you can also select the camera or microphone that you want to use for this specific show. Then you join the studio and you're greeted with this type of an interface. You see your own video here on the left. You can see the guest coming up here on the right. And of course you can still X that away because you might actually also use this for your own recordings if you want to. You can have control over certain controls here down at the bottom. The go live will actually record as well as there's a streaming feature built in if you want to use that. You have control whether you wanna mute your mic or you wanna change the mic. And of course, all of these other things that you're probably used to from a conferencing tool. On the right hand side, you can see the participants that are currently here in the call. You can see different settings as well as the quality of the video that you see here. I am the host and I have a 1080p webcam right now and this system actually goes up to 4K in quality. And then you can also see that there is a audio and video recording set right now for this studio. You can change a bunch of these settings right here. And for example, I would always recommend you to change this to 48 kilohertz, which is the setting that is most used in video production. Generally speaking, you can choose if you want to get up to 4K in quality. And then you have the live streaming as you can see here. However, we don't want to do this right now. So I will disable that. Continuing, you can see that there is settings for the individual people that are part of the call and you can drop that down here. You can choose whether or not that participant should have echo cancellation turned on or off. And you can actually choose this for the other participant in your call. And then you see the current quality as well as the platform that the user has. Now this is actually very cool because not only can you use this in a web-based browser like a Chrome or something similar, but they also have applications native to mobile devices and tablets as well as Mac OS and I think there's Windows. The reason why this is super important is because specifically on mobile devices, the recording capabilities might actually be much more limited in the web browser, which is not the case on a desktop machine. So that's why this is very much a good information to have for you that you know what your guest is working with. And of course you can also see the different settings for camera as well as microphone. And this is still true even for a invited guest which you can also see that information for. And then to the right hand side, you can see there's a couple more features like chat, branding, as well as text and media. However, let's just focus on the recording features right now. Now at this point, you're probably wondering, why should I care for this tool? It just looks like a different conferencing tool. And that comes down to those limitations that I talked about earlier. The Riverside right here will actually transmit the video and audio for you to have a live conversation with your guest or video participant. The special sauce is that they are recording the video and audio right in the browser and what is being sent for the live call is a downrated version of that. The reason why this is such a game changer is that you can have a very solid conversation that has a very fast and responsive reaction because you're only transferring a very small video file for the live video feed. However, the recording quality is increased by a ton. For one example, right now, as you can see here, I am set up for a 1080p recording. The video transmission is probably just 720p. And if the quality of my internet goes lower, it actually will also decrease that quality down to even going audio only for the conversation. But the video of my own recording that is happening right here on my computer will continue in the same quality level because it is not limited at all by the internet transmission speed. Now, you can actually also kind of go in here and see how this would be happening. 
as you can see here, there is a low data mode. And we actually experienced the need for this when we were traveling on islands in Thailand, but we still wanted to create high quality podcast interviews. This here was a lifesaver because we could invite our guest with the link provided, and then they could join in on this call. And even if we had really bad internet on that day, we could then go in here and set this to low data mode for all. And what will happen then is that the transmission of the video will actually be turned off and it will go audio only so that you can still have a conversation, but you're not able to see each other. The video recording will still happen at the same quality level that was happening beforehand. So if the person that you're talking to has a 4K camera or you're using a high mirrorless camera that is connected to your computer via a HDMI capture card or USB-C with the UVC protocol, then you would still record the 4K or 1080p quality right in your browser on your device and the sending over the internet will be happening later. I think this is one of the game-changing features of Riverside and similar tools. To have the option to record locally without the fuss of having to use a separate program or having to record internally in the camera to then later on upload those files and much more. No, here it is completely taken out of the hands for the customer or the client or the guest and they just join that call and they're going to be recorded in a very high quality no matter what happens to the internet connection, even if it drops out completely. The nice feature here as well in comparison to having to do the manual recording parallel to having a WhatsApp call or whatever, is that here the synchronization of audio and video files is also going to be happening automatically. If you have a really solid internet connection, then during the call, the video will also be already uploading in the background, even at the fullest quality. That is of course only the case if the internet connection will provide for that much throughput. If the internet connection is lower, then by the end of the call and when you hit that stop record button, the recording will actually continue to upload in the background and once it's done, the person is actually informed that they can then close that page. If you have a really bad internet connection, you can even shut down the computer in between as long as you come back to that page to continue that upload. And even if you accidentally close that page, you still have an option to recover that recording by sending your guest for the interview a link so that they can rejoin that page to continue that upload as long as the browser hasn't decided to delete it at any point. Adding to all of this, Riverside actually also does something that they call the cloud backup. And that is, again, one of those things that actually saved our butts once in a podcast recording setup. And that was that one of the people that was being interviewed actually used a phone prior to Riverside having that mobile application and the video was not recorded or corrupted on that browser. However, the video recording that was done in the cloud was still usable. So in that case, we didn't get the 1080p or 4K quality, but at least we had a audio backup in the cloud of the conversation that was had and a video backup of all of the video that was transferred during the call as we were speaking. This gives me the peace of mind that there are multiple steps in this process where I will be able to get that audio and video. In 90% of the cases, you probably get those files that were recorded in the browser or mobile application, and those are uploaded to the servers so that you can then download them for your use in whatever editing program you wanna use, or you use the editing programs provided by Riverside, or if something didn't go so well, you will at least have those cloud backup recordings. Now, what I also want to show you is when you're done with your recording here and you stop the recording, you actually also have that studio where you have those past recordings. And as I go into this recording right here, you see there's a bunch of different features that you can use to be able to create clips with this, as well as edit the full episode in this online editor, which I might cover in a future version. But what I want to specifically show you are these recording files right here. 
And that's because this is where the magic happens. As you can see here, you can choose to either download these individually, but you can also choose to export all and you can download all of the tracks as a zip file the Premiere Pro project as an XML, as well as all of the raw data in a zip file. This of course can be used for either Final Cut or for DaVinci Resolve or for Premiere Pro to have a ready-made timeline with all of the different speakers, as well as those raw audio recordings and raw video recordings so that you can edit them in whatever program you want to be using. This has been an absolute game changer in how we produce online video, especially with remote guests. Whether that's for podcasts or documentary work, as well as short form content production, this here has been a game changer in the ability to produce high quality content without the need to be on location, but still have the peace of mind that you're getting the best quality of that video. Now, if you wanna check out Riverside, of course, there will be a link down in the description. That is an affiliate link and helps me make more videos like this possible. If you want to learn more about this, you can of course subscribe to this channel. And if you want custom made solutions and consulting in this type of area, please reach out to me. The link will also be in the description down below and we can set up a consulting session. Now with all that said, I hope you upgrade your remote video recordings with Riverside and I'll see you in another video.